السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله My brothers and sisters, what an amazing community you are Look at yourselves, mashaAllah, you've come here You're all together, your brothers and sisters You are amazing But you know what? I want to take a little moment right now You're going to share this with me, inshaAllah, please This event couldn't have happened without some people, brothers and sisters, who you don't see up here on the stage. Nobody knows about them except a few. They are the backbones of what's happened. They've come hundreds of kilometers from their homes. Some of them left their parents, their spouses, their children behind. Some of them have dedicated night and day, just taking us from place to place. And subhanAllah, I can't thank them enough. May Allah SWT reward them, the volunteers of this event. Everyone, takbir for them. Come on, Allahu Akbar. Round of applause if you want as well. Allah ibarik fi Once again for the volunteers. Allahu Akbar. May Allah SWT reward them and their families and their parents. Say Ameen. May Allah reward you, my dear brothers and sisters. You know what? This is the thing. This is what Allah loves to see. He loves to see the true brotherhood and sisterhood among us. Allah loves to see us loving one another, working together. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that. And He says, I am with you. I'm in your support. Allah doesn't like individualism. People just isolating themselves and others not asking about them. We are like one body. We share our pain. We share our feelings. We share our support. And we defend each other. We respect each other. And if we see somebody doing the wrong thing, we advise them from our heart. And we want the best for them. We try. Because we are truly brothers and sisters, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called us. You know, brothers and sisters, those people who are like that, the volunteers, yourselves, coming together, this is called taqwa, insha'Allah. And you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? إِنَّ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ مَفَازًا حَدَائِقَ وَأَعْنَابًا وَكَوَاعِبَ أَتْرَابًا وَكَأْسًا دِهَاقًا لَا يَسْمَعُونَ فِيهَا لَغْوًا وَلَا كِذَّابًا جَزَاءً مِّن رَبِّكَ عَطَاءً حِسَابًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Naba Indeed without a doubt for those who are pious with their Lord they will be triumphant. Gardens and vines, spouses youthful and beautiful, mega full glasses of wine, they will hear no hurtful words and there are no lies, a reward well and above what they deserve. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all among them. My dear brothers and sisters, Jannah, paradise. It's not for everyone, but this is the life in which we are preparing for it. Not only Jannah, but to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And today I want to share with you something. As people are going to paradise, insha'Allah, I want to talk about something which, insha'Allah, you will love. Remember when I said that we love each other for the sake of Allah? You love people not because they're famous, not because they're wealthy, not because just because they're related to you. Yes, that's love as well. You don't love someone just because they're good looking or because of whatever. We love you all because you are a Muslim, you are a believer, you are a good person. We can even love non-Muslims for their goodness as well. Sometimes you might have a non-Muslim parent or a non-Muslim family member. Islam doesn't deny you that. But the love as in faith is something else. The love in faith is something special. My brothers and sisters, there is a hadith in Sahih al-Tirmidhi, hadith number 2390 and others, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, those who love each other for me, Allah says, Allah, those who love each other for my majesty will be on high towers of light on the day of judgment that even the prophets and the martyrs will admire them. And you know what? Listen to this beautiful story on the day of judgment in how the believers and people will be towards each other. The hadith is in Bukhari, 
7439 and Sahih Muslim 183 with a slight variance. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when the people have crossed the Sirat, the bridge bestowed above hellfire, and the believers who deserve paradise, they cross finally. Some people cross as fast as the wind, some of them as fast as the lightning, some of them as fast as the eyesight, some of them run, some of them crawl, and some of them fall. Even from among the Muslims, they will fall, depending on what kind of sins they died with that they did not repent from. But listen, those believers who cross the Sirat, they reach it. And they are so exhausted, but at the same time, they are extremely relieved. They cannot believe that they finally made it. All they were worried about is for them to make it. And suddenly, when they make it past the Sirat, they remember something. They forget about themselves, they turn around, and they remember their brothers and sisters, their friends, their family, their neighbors, their mates at school, their colleagues at work, the people they went to to this event, the people they did charity work together with, the people they met at the masjid in Ramadan for taraweeh, the people they visited when they were sick and when you were sick they visited you, the people who you shared a journey with, some people who you sat around and had a good time with, people who invited you and you invited them, the list goes on. You remember these people, you remember their faces. And the Rasul Sallallahu then says something. He said, by Allah who possesses my soul, there is no one in the universe who is more, who is greater in insisting and pleading to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala than the way these people will be on that day. They will be pleading to Allah to say, oh, our Lord, so-and-so, Muhammad, Fatima, Asya, my mother, my father, my brother, my sister, my friend, my neighbor. Ya Rabb, they have fallen. I remember them. And then they say, Ya Rabb, I remember them. They gave in charity. They were at a charitable event. They were at a, a, a religious event. They were helping this person or that person. We did something together. Ya Rabb, they came to Eid prayer. Ya Rabb, they, they came to the masjid. Ya Rabb, I saw them gifting this or doing that or helping. They remember and they try to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even the tiniest thing they can remember to so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save them. You might be asking, why doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just save them? Are they more merciful than Allah? A'udhu billah, Allah is arham ar rahimin But you see, this is out of Allah's mercy and generosity. Allah will save them if they deserve it. But He wants to give you, He wants to give you an honor to show us now, now as we're listening to this hadith, you and I, to show us what Allah wants from us. He wants us to be brothers and sisters. To the point that he tells us about the hereafter, how he will give you that honor to share it even in the hereafter. But it cannot happen then unless it happens here. And then Allah says, go. In another hadith, he goes, they go with the angels. And Allah says, take out of the fire anyone who you can remember doing a good deed, even the size of a coin. They go there, the hadith is long. The angels start taking out and you point them out. The fire doesn't burn you. Then they say, Ya Rabb, we don't know anyone else. We can't see them, but there's others. They've gone. They've, they're deep in. But we still remember them. We couldn't find them. Allah then says, go. Take out anyone you can find who has half a coin's worth of good deeds they've ever done in their life. They go with them and they take them out. The prophets intercede. The angels intercede. You, bi'ithnillah, ya Rabb, insha'Allah, the believers intercede. And Allah gives you that honor. And then Allah says, all of them have interceded. And now it is my turn. And the Rasul Sallallahu says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes out uncountable numbers of people who had fallen deep into hellfire until the last person. Allahu alam how long they're in there. You probably heard the hadith about the last man to enter paradise. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves them eventually. So there are three types of people whom they intercede for. Number one, people who died with major sins. 
and they never repented from those major sins. Number two, they are the people who, whose level is not very high. So then they intercede for these people to their level to go even higher. And number three, the people who are about to fall into hellfire and they know it, but they say, oh Allah, just let them off. Don't let them fall into the fire. So taking people out, saving people from going into the fire, and those whose levels were low, even higher. And I'll give you an example of those who intercede for people whose levels are low. First and foremost are your parents. Allah says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَاتَّبَعَتْهُمْ ذُرِّيَّتُهُمْ بِإِيمَانٍ أَلْحَقْنَا بِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ أَلْحَقْنَا بِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَمَا أَلَتْنَاهُمْ مِنْ عَمَلِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Allah says, and those who believe, and their offspring follow them in true belief and guidance. Allah will reunite their families with them, and He will not bring anyone downwards, He will bring those of their families upwards. So let's say, for example, your parents are up in the higher level, or you are in the higher level, and your parents' deeds are not enough, or your deeds are not enough. Instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bringing them down, He unites you with them upwards, and nobody comes down, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is so merciful and compassionate. So my brothers and sisters, two things. Don't take for granted righteous friends. Those righteous friends are the ones who will remember you in the hereafter when you need it. And the signs of them are the ones who remember you now in this world. You know how when some people, they feel that nobody really asks about them until something goes wrong, until they need you. Have you ever been in that situation? They never ask about you until they need you. And some people, they complain about that. They say, what? They've never called me now because they need me. They call me. Where were you in the past five years? Don't let the shaitan talk to you like that. I want you to look at it in a different way. You ready? These people, they've come to you because all their other friends who've been, who've been with them and all those other people, they can't help them. When everything else is dark around them, you are the only light they see. You are a light. And if you are in that position, my brother and sister, say alhamdulillah and make a sajda to Allah because Allah has chosen you to use you for something He loves. And when Allah chooses you, what do you think you're going to end up? Where, where are you going to end up? Aren't you going to end up with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So brothers and sisters, a Muslim doesn't think like that. We think the other way. My brothers and sisters, we've talked about those who will intercede. You will vouch for your friend, inshaAllah. Now here is my question to you. Do you want to be the person who intercedes or do you want to be the other person who they intercede for you? You want to be the person who intercedes. You want to intercede for your mom and dad. You want to intercede for your brothers and sisters, for your children, for your friends. You're the one who wants to intercede. Isn't that right? Well, I'm going to tell you something. All of you, inshallah, if you live a life of righteousness, you avoid your major sins, and if you fall in them, you repent again and again. And you pray your five daily prayers, you fast your month of Ramadan, you do your zakah, and you never commit shirk, and if you do, you repent to Allah immediately, brothers and sisters, and you don't take people's rights, most likely you will be an intercessor, inshallah. There are only one type of people who are Muslims, they're believers. They used to pray probably even night and day. Some of them probably used to do night prayer every single night. They probably fasted more than me and you. They've probably gone to Hajj every single year of their life. They probably, mashallah, when you look at them, you think they are saints walking on earth. But guess what? There is a type of them who will be prevented and denied to intercede for anyone. Not only will they be denied to intercede for anyone, they will be denied to bear witness for the prophets and messengers that they delivered the message in truth. Do you know who these people are? They're believers. They've done all the acts of worship. You want to know who they are? So that, inshallah, none of us is one of them. 
I want you to listen very carefully to this. This is very important, very close to my heart, and I take this very seriously, and I hope, inshallah, Ya Rab, any of us who are like that, to truly and honestly think about themselves and look into themselves and judge themselves and then change. Who are they? Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يكون اللعانون شفعاء ولا شهداء يوم القيامة صحيح مسلم Those who curse and degrade others will not be intercessors or witnesses for the prophets and, and, and messengers on the day of judgment اللعن May Allah curse that person uh, or the people who say to other Muslims you're a kafir or to say about other Muslims, you're a fasik, you're a corrupter, you're a this and a that. When they don't deserve it, Allah Wasallam says, they will not be able to be intercessors for anyone on that day of judgment. They are not qualified. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inni lam wa inna rahma. I have not been sent as a cursor of people and a degrader. I was sent as a mercy. You want to be like the Prophet ﷺ, then follow in his sunnah. Rasul ﷺ says, لا ينبغي لصديق أن يكون لعان لصديق أن يكون لعانا صحيح مسلم It is not befitting for a person who is honest and truthful in their deen and to themselves to be a cursor of others. اللعان means, oh God, take them out of your mercy. They don't deserve your mercy. My dear brothers and sisters, these types of people who degrade others based on what they have seen of something small, or they're ambiguous, or they hear something about them without verifying and without even going and speaking to them, and they immediately start to talk about them and degrading them and calling them and labeling them with things, these people will not be able to intercede on the Day of Judgment, brothers and sisters. Yes, we advise one another, but we have to verify and not degrade one another. My brothers and sisters in Islam, and then the believers arrive at the doors of Jannah. After they have interceded, they arrive at the doors of Jannah. Now some people haven't come out of hellfire yet, but the intercession keeps going, and they arrive at the door of Jannah. And they're waiting there, and everybody gets into a group. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Everyone goes into a group, the like, the person is in the group of the people who are like them. So the people who used to love and imitate and be like here in this world, those are the people you will be gathered in the hereafter. The scholars, for example, with the scholars, the prophets with the prophets, for example, uh, the scholars with the scholars, the righteous with the righteous, the people who are excellent in their fasting, they'll be with people who are excellent in their fasting, people who are excellent in charity and giving, they'll be with the people who, were, who excelled in charity and giving, those who excelled in salat and prayer and worship, they'll be with the people who excelled in prayer and worship and so on and so forth. And that's a little hint over here, brothers and sisters, that in the world, the, 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 the 21st century of social media trends, be careful of attaching your heart to celebrities and influences and making them everything in your life. Because Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when Mu'adh radiallahu anhu came to him and he said, Ya oh, Hudayfa, or uh, sorry, uh, Hanzala, he said, Ya Rasul Allah, when we leave your company, we kind of, our iman goes down and we kind of forget how wonderful it was when we were around you. But when we're with you, our iman goes high and we're more conscious of ourselves. Are we hypocrites? For Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he smiled and said, Oh no, do you love me? He says, I love you, Ya Rasul Allah. He said, Al mar'u ma'man ahab. Every person will be gathered with those whom they love. And loving just doesn't mean by word. Loving means that you do what means, what love means. A husband telling his wife, I love you, but does nothing about it and doesn't show it. She's not going to appreciate it. Same with the wife. She never shows any love for her husband, always complaining and everything about everything. All the time, he's going to say, well, where's the love? Your children telling her, I love you, but they rebel against you in every way. You're not going to believe that much. And, and children, their parents telling them, I love you but they abuse them, then where's the love? So brothers and sisters, love has a big meaning, even in Islam. So everybody's gathered with those whom they used to love and imitate, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا And those who feared their Lord, who were of piety in this world, they will be escorted, directed 
in the most honorable way to Jannah in groups. Allah says this beautiful, amazing picture where he says they reach the doors of paradise and who is awaiting for them there? The angels. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa arrives and he knocks on the door and he is the first one to whom the door, the main door of Jannah opens. And he enters it and then the believers, they see the angels and they all call out to them. The angels welcome them and they say, welcome, peace be with you. Meaning that the world that you lived in before, there was hardly any peace. You never found full security. Everybody was, there was anxiety, there was depression, there was claustrophobia in this world. There was... And then they say, this is true peace and security forever. Tiptum, oh, how beautiful you are, the angels say. Tiptum, you are beautiful because you enter paradise and the faces change. Light emanates from your face, from your beauty. You don't enter looking the same way and you don't enter old or you don't enter um, in, a, in the way that you didn't like about yourself. or what, You enter in a beautiful, beautiful way beyond your imagination. And the angels say, how beautiful you are. They validate your beauty. They look and they say, oh, you are so amazing. Can you imagine the angels? The beautiful angels calling you beautiful. They admire the way you look. And Allah honors you that way. And Rasul Sallallahu he describes how the people of paradise enter. I'm going to show you again. This is the meaning of brotherhood and love. This is why I'm telling you right now, it'll mean a lot over there. They all hold each other. As they're entering paradise, the believers, they hold each other. Can you imagine that? Each one holding on to the other one. Why are they holding? Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, they enter while holding on to each other because they're so excited and nervous. We're going in. We're going in. Let's do it. It reminds me of when we go on um, the roller coaster. And it's the first time you've gone on it with your mates. And you come up and you go, hold on to me, hold on to me. I'm so excited. Ah! And you have so much fun. And you go, I want to do it again. I want to do it again. Remember your childhood? Subhanallah, that's how they were in paradise. You, you, you return back to that childhood um, attitude and you, you say, let's go in. Come on, what are we going to expect? And as you enter, the angels start coming in from all the doors of paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he describes this image by saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا بَتِغَاءَ رِضْبِتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ رَبِّهِمْ وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَأَنْفَقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيَةً وَأَنْفَقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيَةً وَيَدْرَؤُونَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ السَّيِّئَةِ وَيَدْرَؤُونَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ السَّيِّئَةَ أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ عُقُبَ الدَّارِ Allah describes features. He says, and those, and those who are patient and persevering throughout their life, only wishing and doing it to see their Lord and for the sake of their Lord. You were patient in this world. You copped a lot of, a lot of hardships, left, right, and center. You had so many, so much grief, so much pain, so much turmoil, family, marriage, or divorce, or loss, death, hunger, sickness, loss of wealth, bullying, hurt, struggles, pain, everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and those who were persevering and patient during all that time. Do you think Allah is not going to remember that? Do you think Allah doesn't know what you're going through, my dear brother and sister? Wallahi, He knows. But don't worry. He is not going to leave you alone and just wait and see. Allah says, and they used to pray their prayers, meaning that they kept their connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Will you, will you believe 
that a friend really likes you, but they hardly ever contact you. You probably send them a message and they just look at it. And they say, oh, well, I, was, I was busy or something. Yeah, have you, you've probably done that to your mates too, haven't you? Oh, I'm busy. Because Allah says, if you want to have your connection with me, then pray to me. I was saying it in my last talk. My little daughter once, she, she saw me praying and she said when she was little, when she was about three years old, she said, I want a ladder to go up to Jannah. I said, why do you want a ladder, Boba, to go up to Jannah? She said, because I want to see Allah and I want to hug him. I said, do you love Allah? She goes, yeah. I go, why do you love Allah? And she said, because he gave me my dad, he gave me my mom, and he gave me food, and he gave me a bed, and he gave me a blanket that has colors on it. I said, I gave you that, Boba. She goes, yeah, 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 but like Allah made you get it. And she was so cute saying all that stuff. And then she hugged me and I said, all right. If you want to really hug Allah in her language, I said, you've got to pray to Allah. And prayer, and you're still little right now, but this is how we hug Allah, we pray. And she goes, oh, is that why we do this? So we hug Him. So there's a way to connect to Allah, just like everything else. You know, if you've got a pet, who's got a pet at home? Who's got pets? What have you got? What have you got? What have you got? A cat? Dog? Stop. <laughs> uh, what have you got? What is it? You've got a cat. Il gatto. What else? Who's got another pet? What have you got, my dear brother? A cat? Oh, how cute. Who else? Who's got a pet? Sisters, what pets have you got? Who? Cats? Everyone's cats here? I understand. All right, I know. Cats? Meow. I've got a cat too, by the way. I've got two kittens. The cat's also pregnant. She, she commits zina every day. <laughs> Naughty cat. Yes, brother? What have you got? A dragon? Come on, brother. Lord of the Rings is, you know, it's just a fantasy. Sorry, Habibi? A lizard dragon. Has anyone got something else? That's, that's, that's pretty unique. From Australia? Bro, that's illegal. I don't know what's going on there. A, how did you import it? You've got to give me your ways. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, you know the pets that you have. Don't you communicate with them in a special way? You got your cat, you got to do certain things. You can't talk to her like a human. Some of you do, I know. Some, some of us are a little bit cooked here. But, you know, you, in order to establish a relationship with your birds, with your cat, with your dog, if you have a dog, if you, let's say a guide dog or a guard dog or a shepherd dog or, you know, whatever kind of, or you have some other pets, there's a way to connect even with the animal. There's a way to connect with your spouse, with your children, with your parents. There's a way to connect with even nature. And Allah has a special way to connect with him. My brothers and sisters, and those who, come, who establish their salat, and then Allah says, and those who when they do bad deeds, they always follow it up with good deeds. That's such a relief for me. I don't know about you, but if I fall into bad deeds, I always know that Allah subhanahu wa told me I've got a special sponge. It's called the sponge of good deeds. All I have to do is go and do a good deed, and inshallah, automatically, my bad deed will be erased, inshallah. So when you do salat, when you smile to someone, when you say salam alaikum to someone, when you are here, you came for the sake of Allah right now, inshallah, your bad deeds are being wiped off. When you make wudu, when you do salat, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa he spoke to uh, Mu'adh and he said, you know, always follow up your bad deeds with a good deed and it will wipe it away. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, if I say la ilaha illallah, is that a good deed? He said, among the best deeds. See how easy it is, my brothers and sisters. It beats being on TikTok for two hours until 3 a.m. Say la ilaha illallah after it. Now you're going to say, Sheikh Bilal told us we can go two hours on TikTok, and then when it's 3 a.m., I'll just say la ilaha illallah, and everything will go away. Okay, that's a lot. That's overboard, because then your eyes will hurt, your stomach will hurt, your heart will hurt. So look after yourselves. Allah says that is the beautiful end for them. And now finally, brothers and sisters, Jannah is not the most beautiful thing. It is amazing. And when you enter it, the stories are huge. I'll just say this. Rasul Sallallahu said, فِيهَا مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ Allah, Rasul Sallallahu said, In paradise there are things that no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, and no human or, or creature has ever even imagined. And qalb means heart. It's not imagine with your mind, imagine with your heart. Because, you know, with heart you've got feelings. So nobody's ever even had the imagination of such feelings or senses. That's what paradise is like. This is what we're working for, bi And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, but in paradise, the greatest thing that people will receive 
is meeting, speaking to, and seeing their Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the hadith of Musnad Ahmad 1894. Um, and it's a Sahih Hadith in accordance with the condition of Sahih Muslim. Also, An Nasai 11234, and Ibn Habban 7441, and Ad Dar Qutni 155, and in Sahih Muslim. You know, I'm saying all these evidences because I've seen on YouTube and everybody just wants to talk, right? When they put these comments, gosh, these comments. They come up and they go, Where's the reference? What's the source? And these guys don't even know. You tell them Ibn Habban, they go, What's that? They don't know what the source is. But it's true, you've got to ask for the source. But some of these people, they ask it because they don't believe it. Even if you give them the source. La ilaha illallah. It is an authentic hadith and the belief of all the Muslims who follow the right path. That you will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any doubt, inshaAllah, if you enter paradise. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that someone will call out in paradise, an angel, and he will say, Ya ahl al-jannah, O people of paradise. You have a meeting and a promise from your Lord that he's going to give you which he has not yet given you. So then the people of paradise go to a meeting place. And then they hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking to them. And he says to them, O oh, people of paradise, araditum, araditum. Are you happy, pleased and satisfied? Are you happy, pleased and satisfied? And they will say, Ya Rab, how can we not be satisfied and happy when you have saved us from the fire and given us things that no eye has ever seen or heart has ever imagined? You didn't give anything like this to anyone before. Allah says, ask me. We, they say, what, what, will you, what, what is there to ask you, our Lord? He goes, ask me, ask me. And then they'll say, Ya Rab, all we miss right now is just your own pleasure upon us. And Allah says, I'll tell you. My pleasure is bestowed upon you. I will never, ever, ever be displeased with you, no matter what you do from here to eternity. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala releases the veil, and you see Allah. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa says, and there is nothing more beautiful that they could imagine, more beautiful than when they look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, the ulama said they will forget all the beauty in paradise that they had seen up to that point. And Allah speaks to every person in paradise. And He says to you, remember this and remember that, reminiscing on this life. And you say, yes, Ya Rabbi, have you not forgiven me? And Allah will say, what are you talking about? I never exposed you in that life. And today I will not expose you, but I just want to show you that I knew, but I forgave you. You see, brothers and sisters, we are not more merciful than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's have mercy to one another. And finally, just a very quick one about paradise. You know, in paradise, some people they say, oh, don't you get bored? Allah says, no. In the Quran, he says, we have taken boredom away from them. You don't get bored. One brother, he said to me, it's a student, about 15 years old. He goes, Oh, if you don't get bored, then that's boring. <laughs> I, go, I, go, I don't know what you're, what you're on, mate, but you know, the, if you don't want your place in paradise, I'll take it. Just don't bother me. I'll have do not disturb for the next 70 years. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, there is no boredom in paradise. It is not like this life. It's not the same, Allah says, we take away all the negativity from their chests and they will be pleased forever and ever. It's always, everything's always new. In fact, one man, Rasul said, in paradise, I'll finish it with this, he said, there is a person in paradise who will say, oh, our Lord, I would like to farm. He's in paradise, he wants to farm. He goes, I want crops, I want to plant. He remembers the former life, you remember the former life. So Allah says to him here, he puts these seeds and they start growing faster than what his eyesight could catch. Beautiful blossoming, I can't even, there's no way to describe the colors and the beauty. And he's amazed in paradise, Rasul Sallallahu says. And then one Bedouin man who was sitting there listening, he said, Ya Rasul Allah, come on. We're not farmers. This guy, something's wrong. They, they like farming and stuff like that. We don't like it. I don't want that. What's this farming business? We want something else. The point that I'm trying to say is, everybody will be satisfied in paradise and you will receive everything that will please you, insha'Allah, and everybody is unique. And don't worry, Allah knows exactly who you are, what you're doing, what you need, 
and where you're going. And Allah is with you wherever you are. Say alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the union once again in paradise and at the sirat. Say ameen. Last thing I just want to say before I get off the stage. I forgot to say this, which is very important. Brothers and sisters, there's a group of believers on the Day of Judgment. They will be in custody. They're not allowed to move. You know who they are? They're the ones who have harmed other people, taken the rights of other people, or in debt. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will delay these people until the rights have been sorted out on the Day of Judgment. So, if you owe someone something, you've upset someone, you've hurt someone wrongfully, you've called someone something, you owe someone whatever, even a non-Muslim, even a non-Muslim, because Allah says, وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدَ Your Lord is not an oppressor to anyone. You better resolve it now before the day comes. If you can't remember them, make dua for them or give a sadaqah on their behalf, even if it's something small. Jazakumullah khair for listening. May Allah bless you, my dear brothers and sisters. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Oh.